Hey now. Hey! Oh, <laughs> oh, you covered me in dirt. You hey, jerk. you're covering me. Because I'm fixing up burn some rubber out of here. <laughs> oh, are you? I'd be curious. Your electronic fuel injection will keep up until I put my bikini on. Uh -huh. Hey, I got. There we go. <laughs> Alright, guys, so today we're out riding the Harvey Danielson with my good buddy Jeremiah on his Harley Davidson. That's right. Out driving around. Enjoying the brisk 71 degree weather here in Florida, rocking my lowbrow customs hoodie, keeping me nice and toasty. Look at that bike. So yeah. pretty. Yeah. I, I like our motorcycle. It's fun. So what year is it? It's a 2000 Dyna Super Glide Sport. Nice. With a big board kit and a 525 can. Red line. <laughs> and, and loud exhaust. Hey, yours is louder than mine. Uh, it doesn't sound like it. But it is. Yeah. I promise. So, Jeremiah, I've been doing this uh, YouTube thing for a year, man. And uh, I tell you what, it's definitely been uh, a fun time. There's been uh, a lot of uh, really cool things that's happened over the last year that I was able to capture and share with people online. And uh, today I just wanted you to join me on this ride and talk about YouTube, talk about what I've done, where I'm going and stuff like that. So you being uh, a fellow YouTuber yourself, um, how do you think uh, things have gone for the Weems Motor Co channel? I think you've had a lot of growth, and I, I've enjoyed it. But my favorite video of this year was recent with your built, uh, your Born Free 13 build when you've been in the garage. So uh -huh. it wasn't the last one; it was like the one before because it's the Jared behind the camera that people don't see. <laughs> well, you must be talking about the video where I was uh, breaking down the motor, where I was taking the sledgehammer to that thing. Yes, yeah, that was great. I was Man, like, this is amazing. You should see the comments that I got from that. So many people were like freaked out that I was going that crazy on that motor. But how would you got? How would you gotten it out? You know, I. If the thing is, is I don't have months for that motor to sit and soak in kerosene or sit in auto. You see this? She yeah. wanted a new sissy bar. He got yeah. it for her. That's <laughs> Killer. Anyway, sorry. They're from Ohio. Wow. Uh, so yeah, I, you know, I just didn't have the time to let the motor properly soak and wait. Uh, and I, like I said, I wasn't saving anything at that top end. So to me, it really didn't matter. Uh, I wouldn't have invested all the money to fix it in, in the first mm. place, so yeah, that's where it went. No. What was the hardest part of getting started with your channel? Um, I, I'd say the most difficult is the learning curve for the editing programs, and when I first started, I just had way too much footage, way too much raw footage that I had to edit down. Um, so yeah, that's, that's been the toughest part, you know, working my way through using old cameras, getting newer cameras, upgrading. Um, that's been probably the most difficult part of it. Yeah. yeah, I find that if you have a computer job, we probably need to go straight. You may want to tuck in there, but having a computer job and looking at, at a camera, it's just no fun. Or at least editing videos. I find it difficult. Right. There you go. I mean, that's been the hardest part. You're sitting there. You're trying to learn a new software. You almost get burnt out. Did you almost get burnt out trying to figure out how to edit videos? Uh, 
I no, I wouldn't say burnt out. I got more uh, like frustrations at the beginning because I was just trying to figure out how to do certain things. Um, like how to, I mean, all editing software are pretty much offer the same capa capabilities. It's just how to make that program do what another program does. And all of my friends are Apple guys and I'm a Windows guy, so. Me too, you're didn't, good. Didn't really help, you know, to be able to answer questions and whatnot. So, yeah, that's it. So, another question that I thought up for you was, what was your favorite video from this past year? Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> I think I looked this past week. I think I released, uh, it was over 65 videos that I released in the last year. Um, so, man, my favorites. Uh, you know, I think my favorite, maybe not for content, but just for doing it, uh, was the video that I did with my daughter, bringing her out, working on dad's bike. We changed the oil, we cleaned the carburetors, which needs to happen again, but <laughs> uh, but yeah, I really enjoyed that one just because, you know, spending time with family, and that's something I really want Weems Motor Co. YouTube channel to be about is, you know, this is just me uh, with the camera in front of me. This is my life. This is my family. Um, you know, and I just want to be genuine, be vulnerable, and be real. Out of all the events that you went to this past year, what was the top event that you were able to participate in? Oh uh, I man, definitely uh, had to be born free. It was such a cool opportunity to be able to uh, not only go to the show, but just the road trip, the time I spent with friends and everything, making my way across the country. I was on the road for over three weeks, and uh, just it was just a, such a cool time. Great show, great atmosphere, really cool people, amazing motorcycles. Yeah, more free is definitely it. What was the, what's your favorite bike that you've ever built that no one's ever seen? Ooh. Uh, that's, hard to, that's kind of hard a thing to say that people have not seen. Uh, oh, yeah, I got it. <laughs> 1978 Honda XR75 dirt bike that I turned into a trike and drag raced when I was probably 10 or 12 years old. That would definitely be it. I think we should do that again. What do you mean? I think oh. you should build another trike. <laughs> that would be cool. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's always an option. For all your viewers that want to get into into custom builds, right? Yeah. Where where should they start? Like, what do you start with? Uh oh, man, uh, it's you know I always say anybody when they're going into a project is number one. Um, know your your capabilities uh, you know know your budget uh, if, if you're not comfortable with spending a lot of money or doing a lot of mechanics find a motorcycle that's already running and riding and uh, that has a, a very wide range of aftermarket parts for it it will make it a whole lot easier uh, on your first time build um, don't do what I do. Find the rustiest motorcycle you possibly can find from 70 years ago that they don't make parts for anymore. That's not a wise decision to do for, for anybody. Well, you know that David and I rode up to Barber in the bitter cold. That was ridiculous. <laughs> but So we rode up there in the bitter cold, and, uh, well, we got to see something cool. We saw your bike on the lifts getting ready. Well, how does it feel to have a motorcycle in Barber? Surreal. It's really kind of crazy to stop and think, you know, like, who am I? I'm just a guy that builds motorcycles in his garage um, and uses pretty much just hand tools to make it happen. And to know that, you know, something that I've built is sitting in that museum, it's just, it's very humbling. It's, that's all I can say. It's just very humbling. So how was it for you, like, going on that tour and then going down into the lower basements of Barber and seeing that bike sitting on the lift? What did it feel like? It was, 
it was it was very like I know that guy you know <laughs> like it's one of those moments in your life where you know you know somebody that's done something really cool and you can be like I know the guy that built that and, and I'm super proud of him and happy for him you know some people get one thing that drives me nuts is when people get jealous or upset at, at somebody else's success and that's one thing I can't do I can only just be happy and that's all it was it was just man that's awesome yeah. and I get to tell my friends yeah and you man you came to a lot of the events a lot of the shows you actually you know gosh you helped me load and unload that motorcycle numerous times um, so to be able to say you know I, the way I look at it for a lot of people is you know if you were there you know it's just as much your motorcycle as it was mine and uh, you know to be able to raffle it off and raise all that money for Forgotten Angels and then um, the winner of the bike you know being such an amazing person to say hey you know I want to donate this motorcycle to the museum it's just it's very dumbfounding to think that you know there's that that many people in this world that want to do good things that want to push it forward and I think that's the biggest thing about all of it is just use what you got use your talents your gifts your abilities and help somebody else whether it's you know bringing your neighbor's trash can in or building a custom motorcycle and raising money for kids do what you got with what you got yeah all I can do is cook that's all I can do and you do a amazing <laughs> job at it bro <laughs> And you help other people with what you're doing too, man. You make all this food, you go down, you give it out to the homeless, you give it out to people in need, man. And that's, you know, that's something that we all should do is, you know, when we see somebody that's hurting or in an unfortunate situation, man, just reach out our hands with what we got, help them out. Who is somebody that if you have the opportunity to collaborate with you, like it's on your list? Talk about like uh, like building a bike wise. Um, Build a bike, make a video, hang out with, you know. Uh, and uh, that's that's really tough. And I, I just find myself being so busy that I don't have the uh, the time to collaborate and stuff. Like literally, this video is being recorded the week that it has to get released. And. It's like, oh gosh, man, I, I've got so much work to do in the garage, but there's so many cool people. Um, you know, as far as collaborations, I have this really amazing project coming up, and uh, I'm not sure if we've really even talked about it or not. I heard um, about it. But yeah, the uh, the guys uh, from the Five Dirty Bikers reached out to me this, uh, this past few months, and we've been talking about... Um, you know, paying it forward, just like what we're talking about. And uh, there's a uh, opportunity uh, for us to do another raffle bike, and that's what they reached out to me about. And uh, this one is in support of a local nonprofit for those guys uh, who supports families with special needs children that have autism. And that's that's a real close to my heart because you know my my son has autism too and so I, I linked up with them and I said hey you know what I, I can't finance it I can't donate a motorcycle but I can give you my time I can give you my skills and uh, and build a bike that I think would blow people's minds and uh, we started the discussion and so Weems Motor Co is going to the dark side we're gonna build a Harley Davidson and raffle it off for autism and that's coming up this next year i'm super stoked with that partnering up with not only five dirty bikers but also blockhead is jumping on board because i'm not a harley guy i don't know the motors that well so blockhead's going to do all the motor work do uh super you know crazy performance stuff on it and uh so i get to do all of the design and the fabrication uh and he's doing all of the mechanics so so it's gonna be awesome so, what other big plans do you have this year, then? Uh, finish this motorcycle for Born Free. <laughs> How much time do you have left? So, as of this video coming out this week, I have five months and two weeks until I have to have the motorcycle 
in LA for the Born Free show. It's gonna take me about a week to get there, so I gotta subtract that. And then obviously I don't wanna be starting this motorcycle up the night that I have to load it on the trailer, so I just got a back plan. So I, I'm basically telling myself I have four months to finish this motorcycle up. And um, I've got to finish all the fabrication of the frame and everything has to be done ready for teardown in April for all the stuff to go out to powder coat and all of those things. And you're still a green man, right? I'm definitely a green. I, I think I'll always be a green icy pop guy. I don't know. It's just, I like the, the green flavor. I don't know what flavor it is. Maybe like melon or something or sour apple. I don't know what it is. It's, it's green flavor. I have this purple problem, as you can tell. Oh yeah, you definitely have a purple problem, buddy. <laughs> Did you notice that my sunglasses now match my motorcycle? Uh oh, I've Lord. got that problem. Oh yeah. my god! And I'm bored in February, so I think it's all supposed to be this way. <laughs> the planets are aligning. The for planets your, are aligning. The purpleness. Yeah, my wife and I are going to get to go on a cruise, and we never did anything for our honeymoon, so she's like, would you wear this pink jacket? I was like, no, but if you buy a purple jacket like this, I will. And she's like, of course. So do you, like, have, do you have a name for your bike? Uh, well, I like to call it the Purple People Feeder when we go out and give food to the homeless. But what was funny is we did that quite a bit for a while, and then... Some people started talking to me and and about how they were getting in trouble for doing it. And I'm like, what? Apparently around here, if you're not in the food service business and you get caught, they will write you a ticket, which doesn't defer me all that much, but definitely put a second thought in, which is frustrating because you should be able to help people without having to worry about, you know, getting in trouble for helping people. It doesn't make any sense to me. Exactly. It makes no sense. It's no different than you doing a barbecue at your house and inviting a bunch of people over to feed them. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. That, then I say it's painted in Barney blood. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I don't know. I love it because it's different. We don't see them. I've counted six. And you've sent me a picture of one of them, of yeah, the one, six that I know about. One was at Born Free this past year. It was pretty gnarly. So, yeah. uh, what's, uh, what's the next thing on the bike? What are you going to do? Well, I ordered a McCoonie. Okay. And then I'm trying to resist the Dyna Bro 2 into 1. Mm. I don't know uh, how long it's going to last. Yeah. Because I don't get the low end torque out of sure. this one. Yeah, you need a little bit of back pressure. Well, I mean, I've got the little uh, inserts for it. That doesn't work though. Hey, okay. by the way, if you ride down to Clearwater and you have those out, you'll get a ticket. I got a ticket. Yeah, but you said it red lights and rev bomb. That's why you no, get a ticket. No, we saw it. We saw it, kid. <laughs> for, <laughs> to be fair, and if anybody else watches Letterkenny, they should chime in with To Be Fair. Anyways, To Be Fair, I saw a little kid in a dinosaur outfit and he was doing this to me. And so, I had to. I, I had to give him a little toot toot. Yeah, we know how your toot toots go. Yeah. Matter of fact, come on up here and give me a toot toot. Motorcycle tooted as I missed the gear. Embarrassing. <laughs> it's on video for everybody to see. That's fine. It's it's something about these five-speed gearboxes, man. Are you going through? Yeah. And now I ran a red light. Whatever. You did, I did. Nah. What's one fun fact that nobody knows about Jared Weems? I'm a jerk. No, I would not <laughs> say that. <laughs> uh, one fun fact about me that no one knows. Oh man, like not even my wife? I mean, you could, but you gotta warn your wife then. Uh, Maybe? Well, here's one fun fact. Tomorrow, I am going to buy another motorcycle. Oh boy, what is it? A 1954 Triumph Terrier. 
That sounds cute. It, it actually is really cute. It's 150 cc's of just the most cutest, gorgeous little single cylinder Triumph bumper that you'll ever see. So I'm going to pick that up tomorrow. That's something that all of you guys are getting the first know on. And your daughter will ride it? Uh, I'll ride it. My daughter can ride it. My son can ride it. Well, what I'm trying to say is, is it her first motorcycle then? Oh, snap. You're going to make me obligate to give her a motorcycle, aren't you? Listen, my kids already have dibs on this the day I'm dead. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Are they like counting down the days? Yeah. They're not. Ca they're not yeah. counting down the days, but they're definitely like, you know, hey, who gets that when when you when you're gone, Dad? I was like, well, I guess whoever lets me live with them, I don't know. They're like, Daddy, how are you feeling today? <laughs> yeah, no, they don't do that. But when I mentioned selling this to buy an Ultra Classic, they they gave me the dirtiest look of my life. And I was like, Aww. okay, fine, I won't sell it. I'm sorry. I couldn't bring myself to do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Hey, 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 hey! Hey! Hey now! Hey! Jerk. Hey, Jerk. you're covering me. That's all right. It. Your paint scheme hide paint scheme hides it well. What a jerk. Hey, love you. <laughs> no, you don't. That's an unloving thing you did. for hanging out today with the video hopefully you guys enjoyed it if you're new around here go down and hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed the video hit that thumbs up turn those notifications on and let everyone know what's going on right here at weems motor co peace